to the League of Cinephiles. I'm your host, Alex, and I'm going to bring you more simulated competition. Now, today, I mean, the most anticipated, the most hyped up about, the soon-to-be most historic video on the League of Cinephiles, Cinemores, the original, the OG matchup from the League, the theme in this episode being Fast and Furious, everyone's favorite franchise, you know, the MCU, DCU. We have, you know, we have James Bond's coming up. We also have that. But the Fast and Furious franchise, you know, passion, glory, all of it is on the line in this match. We have a five person elimination match and with me to decide who will be kicked out of the family in each round. I have actually three co-hosts today. We have film trivia class champion, Hunter the Calculator Friesen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Gull Balaban. And of course we have Jack Renault. Now guys, how are we doing today? Doing great. Wonderful. Yeah. Very excited to see some interesting cinema wars. Hope yeah. it's all cinema, fun. Just cinema, make sure... be, cinema being the key word. Cinema. That's the uh, key yeah. word. I got my whiteboard here. I'm going to do a tally for the amount of times family is said in here. I know it's already been a joke. <laughs> yeah, just make sure nobody turns back on family. Two. Two yeah, so once, once, yeah, once it starts, that's what I'll do. So, Jack, I'm going to go to you first. I mean, although Nikita is the champ right now, this is his first title defense. You know, he won his first Cinema Wars just about a week ago, so very recently in the TV Cinema Wars. Now he's back to potentially defend his crown. Only Agnolo. Agnolo is the only person who's been able to successfully defend. He's done it twice. So can he successfully defend it here against four very kind of confident, very motivated challengers? Well, it's going to be interesting because just like with the previous Cinema Wars, this isn't just general debate topics. This is about one specific thing last time it was tv this time it's fast and furious so it's yeah. obvious nikita has that grasp on tv as well as that argument skills so the argument skills are going to carry over now we need to see where the fast and furious knowledge lie which of these competitors because i know they're all going to have their families in their corner who's going to keep family in mind the most going into this match well i might be impartial here but it's also you might pull up the rankings in a little bit here um my team might be at the bottom i don't know we'll, we'll, we'll have to see so dev is really gonna think about the family that i am part of with them we are we are the hunt we are part of a family he knows how to work as a family and he will lead us to victory today and get us I mean, our first part win of another call. family last season yeah he actually switched families well it's actually he had to come to the og one I had to. Okay, I, I, I I appreciate yes, an OG yeah. bro as well, and I had to take him with me on my team. And what it takes to win this is passion. I'll see you very soon. So let's get to the competitors representing the five angry men, making his season two debut, Stefano. How How's it going, today? Alex? Very good. Very great to see you here. Of course, you're part of my faction, Five Angry Men. But how are you doing? How does it feel to be here? It feels great to be back. Uh, I'm excited uh, for this uh, Cinema Wars challenge today. One of your challengers. He is part of the Season 1 Faction Champions, The Ushers. Now representing The Hunt, Dev Netflix Stafford. I don't know. I'm excited. Fast and Furious is what made me start my Instagram account, so... Should be a good challenge. Now, the third competitor representing the Season 1 Faction Champions, The Watchers. He is a former two-time Cinema Wars Champion of the World, Big J from Agnolo. How y'all doing? <laughs> great, great. Good, How good. does it feel here defending your favorite franchise? Oh, my God. I'm so excited. I don't know if I already told you, but Fast and Furious is the most watched franchise in Portugal. So I'm, I'm here to represent all Portuguese here. people. <laughs> Representing Cinephiles in Paradise, Luke Hobbs. I only, I only have nine words for you guys. I will beat your ass like a Cherokee drum. <laughs> That's what's going to happen today. The Hobbs family is representing the levels of family going on. It, it's just blown, it's blown my mind here. We have, we have a lot. We have a lot of family here. Now, let's get to the fifth and final competitor. Representing Gone with a win. He is the current 
Cinemore's champion of the world, the silent killer, Nikita! Room, room, yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah, I'm, I think it's going to be the craziest Cinema Wars to date because it's Fast and Furious after all. It's gone Bollywood after uh, Fast 6. Nikita, how much pressure do you feel right now as the current champion? A lot of pressure is being put on you to defend your crown now. How much are you feeling that right now? Look, I'm not feeling too much pressure because it's Fast and the Furious. I think, as I said, anything can happen in this thing. So, Look at Daniela, loving it. <laughs> Fast 9 is still playing in the cinemas here. Oh, so, I mean, wow, really? uh, still playing here. Yes, too. yes, yeah. You can book a ticket right now and go watch it. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, shit. Now, before we get to it, let's go to the good old rules. We have five competitors in the match currently, four Fast and Furious related prompts, which the competitors have never seen. They will have one minute to prepare answers once the, once the prompt for the round is revealed to them. Once the one minute is over, they will write down their answers and show them to the other competitors. Answers cannot be repeated unless there's a prompt that calls for multiple answers. Once their answers are revealed, each competitor will have 30 seconds for opening arguments. After that 30 seconds is over, they will be muted, and we will go to the next competitor and the next one after that. After the competitor has finished their opening arguments, we will then go to the free debate. Myself and my three co-hosts will judge the match, and we will all together decide who we think should be eliminated each round based on their arguments, based on the answers, rebuttals, stuff of that nature. Now... Are we ready for the first prompt? Daddy's got to go to work, right? Let's get started. <laughs> the first prompt. Sorry. If you had to assemble a team for a heist, which member of Dom's crew would you recruit? We're, we're at 14 right now for the family really? count. Really? Yeah. I just, yeah. It doesn't count what I just said. <laughs> the family count. <laughs> there you go. That's 15. Hobbs. I'm going to go with... I'm, my brain's all over the place. I'm going to go with Tej. Maybe a uh, hot take. I'm going with Randy. I'm going to go with uh, Jacob. Brian. So the reason I ask, uh, I chose OBS is like uh, it was said before, I'm thinking about the real world and being like having all the connections of the FBI, he can get anyone else I need for my team. The second thing is if he goes wrong, we can always say it was FBI sting and we all get out of jail. Also, he has the fighting power, the weapons. So I went with Tez because I feel he's the most well-rounded character. He owned a car shop in Fast 2, so he knows how to build and work a car. He knows how to drive and keep up with some of the better uh, characters in the franchise in terms of the action and driving. And also, he can even keep up with the smartest tech person in Ramsey. He's also very loyal. He's one of the few characters that just never switches sides at any point in a movie. Uh, I went with Randy because um, as the, I noticed as the story progressed through each chapter, um, the heists got more intricate. And Ramsey was really the heart and soul of trying to uncover every single um, in and out of whether you're running to a building or you're trying to hack into some sort of uh, government mainframe, whatever the case is, Ramsey was basically there, uh, basically being the oracle of the team. I'm assuming I'm the uh, the the, br the bronze of the team, uh, and then Ramsey will be my brains. Okay, so I picked Jacob as the latest entry in the movie, and yes, John Cena might not strike you as the most intelligent and uh, strategic guy there is, but according to the canon. He has all the connections in the world, much like Hobbs, but on the opposite side, on the criminal side, he can get you any kind of plane, weapon, uh, he has the financial backing. So this is someone I would like for a heist. And yes, he will be definitely the bronze of the bunch and that will have to be the brains. I went with Brian for multiple reasons. One, he's the best driver out of anyone in the Fast and Furious franchise. Ask any real Fast and Furious fan, they'll tell you Brian's the best driver. <laughs> um, he has that, of course, history with the FBI, I'm pretty sure it was. So he knows the intricacies of security, things like that. And he can hold his own in a fight. He's been doing multiple hand-to-hand -hand fights, even with Dom, and he's held his own. Um, he's quite that athletic if things go wrong. You see how he climbed around that bus at the in Furious 7 where he's about to fall down? Yeah. So, well, Ramsey, she can yeah. drive, can she? She can drive, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was my first thing, that was, yeah. That was the first she point. Drive. Hey, she didn't, she didn't do a bad job in Fast 9. Okay. What, she didn't do what a good did job she either. do in Fast 9, though? Besides mm -hmm. learning how to drive in that one team, what did she contribute to the team? It just disconnect she... her internet, and it's gone. She can't do anything. <laughs> like, she doesn't have Wi-Fi, and she's all loud. That's it. 
I took my. <laughs> and she's pretty weak, so what's she gonna yeah. do against like, I mean, like Jacob and Hobbs, uh, you know? Basically, yeah. Ramsey's is always that behind the scenes person that is behind the computer, and most of the getting in and out of buildings is 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 thanks to her. Yes, you got to break into the building, but she's always the one who is 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 coming up with all of the strategies, all of the plans. Tej does that too. Yeah, I think so Tej does more of the strategy. Like she's a backup to Tej, like his assistant. Let's say, you know. Nah, I but yeah. Ramsey's is smarter than Tej. Okay. Oh but yeah, but she is smarter, but she doesn't have the overall, like the drive, you know, to be the leader, that main tech guy, you know, so to speak. Yeah, but if we if we need her to go anywhere, and if there's no Uber, she can't go anywhere. She can't even drive. So that's like mm -hmm. the biggest. And the thing is, you could pick one person. No one said there was going to be a bunch of other people. So you just pick that one person. And who's going to do all the rest? She's going to, like, use the computer, and that's it. Thankfully, we haven't had any Wi-Fi problems in uh, nine, ten movies. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you don't know about the last one, you know? Yeah. When they go back to the Jurassic World era, you know, with dinosaurs. <laughs> imagine yeah. Yeah, yeah. imagine yeah. her in space, no Wi -Fi and there. she goes to space. She's not gonna have Wi-Fi in space like that. That that's her gone. Yeah, you get Wi-Fi. Wi 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 satellite dishes. Oh God! But, but let's talk about Hobbs. Things. Let's talk about Hobbs because there, there's no sneaky side to Hobbs. You just go in there all guns blazing. And he's a big dude, you know. And Yolo's assembling hashtag Team Bald over there. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah, and that's the that's the one thing with Hobbs. He's virtually indestructible. He's super intelligent, but he lets his ego get in front of him. Throughout Hobbs and Shaw, half of the conflicts were just because he was trying to one up um, Shaw. Like, like if we go in their way, we have to talk about all of them because this is the movie about egos. That's what <laughs> Vin Diesel is all about. That's what Jason Statham is all about. They they all like that. But the thing is, with mine. Like you said, he's indestructible. He doesn't even have to hide. Oh, he's not hiding. Yeah, he doesn't have to hide because, like, he gets the job done every single time. But the like, question that's is, the reason, he, he, that's the reason he doesn't. That's the reason they don't bring him into the movies anymore because it just makes everything look so easy. It just like he kicked a, a torpedo on one of the movies. Like mm. that's the guy you want on your team. I'm the only one here yeah. who who picks somebody who's been to space. So. Hobbs can't take that claim. And Hobbs got pushed off the road by Vin Diesel in uh, Fate of the Furious, just like completely had his guard down. Like, and Ryan, Ryan is a babysitter now in the movies. Oh He's in God. a babysitter taking care of his kids. Yeah. You because he can't even family, drive Ryan. anymore. Wow. He can't. Ryan, you see the ending of F9. He drives a wow. minivan. He drives a wow. minivan now. He drives a skyline in F9. You should not see at the end. I yes, know, but, but still, like, he why was like, he taking care of his time? kids? Because he's he dead, Dev. Because Paul Walker is dead. No, he's not dead in the I movie. Know, about, <laughs> he went away in the movie. journey. His I wife, he sent his wife. I mean, you can argue. do his job. We you might can argue that if Brian was still in, what would his role be? Baby I know, but still, you really think about family and how close they are that Brian would just say, ah, nah, I'll sit out this one. Like, oh, Vin yeah, Diesel and don't. Letty left their kid at home. I don't know who was watching that kid, but apparently Brian, Brian had Brian, to stay home. Brian, <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Brian was planning his own heist with the he's kids. Driving. Yeah, he's planning heist out to change a nappy now. Look, Brian is gone. He, like, he quit. Brian, Brian's he obsolete. Yeah, probably doesn't even have a license anymore. He didn't renew it, so he's gone. Like that's it. Like so, you all don't right. go with Brian well, there. Okay. Maybe being a parent is the hardest job of all. So, you know. Yeah, okay. and Hobbs is a parent, and he says that he has to go to work, and he blows a cast out of his arm. That's <laughs> okay, that's gonna end it. Um, we're gonna get to now the individual we think should be eliminated. It's gonna take some more time. This is where Nikita starts defending his choices. And <laughs> here, I mean, no, no one even touched my uh, choice. No, I no, felt no. nice and comfortable. I forgot what Clearly, it was. I, think this uh, yeah, honestly, right there. I, I, I forgot, forgot who you said halfway through. And no, 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 no one attacked Jacob because he is clearly the superior partner. <laughs> you know, he actually <laughs> has some brains, unlike Rock, and he can drive pretty slick. The well, brain, yeah, the best disappearing act, look, I, 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 I like you. I like you. And that's why I didn't went against you. Because like, you. He's, not even, he's not even a member of Dom's He's team. already a member now. He's, he's, already been 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 he's a villain. Brian he's a member. member in the next one. That's how it works. He's a member yeah, on the next one. You didn't saw the next one. So he's not even a member. So but you guys could have refuted it. No no one well, objected to it. I had a backup. I would take Jacob over Hobbs. You know, honestly, I can't believe we're arguing this stuff. Like, really, I'm sick. 
sitting and like, what the hell are we yeah, arguing it's, about? It's you know, that's how you know you're in the team if you're at the dinner table at the end. Yes, having that yeah. corona. Yeah. Yeah. So did he have the corona? No. No, but he will in the next one. <laughs> yes, he'll probably carry a whole uh, a casket on his shoulder. You know. So we have decided on who we think should be eliminated. It was really, really tough. We have come to a common consensus. That Dev will not be eliminated. <laughs> Dev doesn't know if he should and... be upset or not. You fill in. I felt confident. And... I thought I did really well. Yes, no, he you will win. not be eliminated. Yeah, he I said you will not be eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> Dev, Dev was like, what? I just heard my name. And I no, just, no, we, we, we were pretty like, confident. You know, we were, we were, the, the we were pretty like, confident that you were. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> but. The person we had to eliminate after a lot of conversing was Luke. Decided to eliminate. No. I'm gonna but. dislike this video. <laughs> <laughs> Any last words? Salute mi familia. <laughs> so, one member of the family has been eliminated as we go into the second question. What is the worst Fast and Furious film? This is the one we can have the same. Yes. It's Too Fast, Too Furious, the second one. Too Fast, Too Furious. You already know, I'm going with Fast 9. Oh, too Fast. Fuck's sake. Too Fast, Too Fast, yeah. Uh, look, I'm going to say that uh, the movie's that bad that uh, even though I was reading up on the synopsis now of different movies to remember what the hell they're about, I got so bored that I quit halfway through reading the synopsis about this one. And you take out Vin Diesel and the whole original <laughs> crew, and you only leave Brian in there, and you add up some new characters. It just felt so forgettable and hollow. So so I chose Fast 9 because that's I've loved the franchise for years. And that's the one movie that stood out to me as as soon as I walked out of the theater, I was like, that was not a Fast and Furious movie. It unwrote some of the best things about Vin Diesel's character from the first movie, doing a lot of flashbacks, adding characters. And just as a whole, that was just one of the most forgettable movies I've seen in a long time, and it was over-the-top ridiculous. Uh, in terms of uh, world-building, uh, fa Too Fast, Too Furious was the only one that's kind of stagnant, didn't really build anything, and then from there, part three, it was just world-building from then on. Uh, you take out uh, the, the whole, the whole uh, theme of family is not existent there especially with uh, Toretto not being involved in the film. You know, the fact that uh, Roman is the second lead in the film uh, says a lot in terms of the rest of the films and where he, he fits in place in terms of, like, strength. And... All right, this time let's go to Agnolo. So, yeah, like, for me, if the Fast and the Furious, one of the worst things is Roman, and the, the Too Fast and Furious is, like, Roman show. He, he even, like, takes, like, so much space that even Brian becomes a bit of an annoying character. And the other thing is, like, Fast and Furious knows what it is. It's ridiculous, over-the-top fun. That's why you go there to see it. And Too Fast and Furious doesn't even have that. It tries to be serious, but at the same time put jokes. It never works. And F9 is completely ridiculous. But you know what you're going to get. You go there to laugh at it. Yeah, I would continue with Daniolo's point that if you reached F9, you already know what you're into. I mean, it's been Bollywood since F7, I think. It's just crazy things, tanks, submarines, pushing torpedoes, defying laws of nature. And when you come into F9, you go in there to like make memes and roast it after it and laugh about it with your friends. Then and why, are you roast that, why is Agnolo roasting Roman then if the whole movie is meant to be a meme? Roman's probably the best, like most comedic relief. And they, that you, whole storyline about him thinking they're superheroes, that's exactly what I'm talking about where it's playing into its own memes. Yeah, but when but you see just, memes and stuff, we're talking about the over-the-top yeah. action that you get nowhere. You get in the MCU because they're superheroes. We're not talking about a character that is trying to make jokes and most of the parts, the jokes don't work. And the thing is, Roman fits better now in the F9, F8, because he's so stupid. Basically, you're saying that Fast 9 was so down the charts that you actually just bought into every single thing that just didn't work because it's, it's meant to be bad. No, For me, personally, I, I like Too Fast, Too Furious a decent amount. I thought it had some of the best and most memorable car chases. That opening scene with all the different characters... Uh, I forget the Asian girl's name, but her bright pink car is still one of the most iconic for me personally. It established Tej and Roman, two characters that are still very memorable throughout the franchise, and for me personally are highlights in each of the sequels. And also it established Brian's character arc. 
that went on through the series. After the first movie, it was kind of left ambiguous of he's still a cop, but he let Vin Diesel go. Whereas okay, the second movie the says that he's... And it just feels so forgettable because there is no punchline, no like epic climax okay. at the end, so to speak, you know? Yeah. What do you mean well, epic climax? They crash a car into a boat. That's There's so many scenes in Too Fast, Too Furious that I still remember. I remember that opening car chase. I remember them putting the rat on the guy's stomach. I remember the where they're doing the barrel chase back and forth. And then, of yeah, course, might, crashing the boat at the end, ejecting the, the seat. Like, uh, so I, would ar- I would argue that just, it's just more of a contained story. And, uh, it, again, it doesn't it doesn't add anything in terms of, uh, yes, you have those two characters. But the fact that Roman is your lead and then now he's now a second stringer from the, the rest of the series, I think that says a lot. In terms Fifth of finger. Yeah. Okay, so that's going to end it. So we have a decision to make on our hands. We've come to a common consensus. Let me just say before... We start that I think this was maybe one of Dev's best round in the league. Like honestly, I think we all agreed that Dev alone was was defended all three of you guys, and we would have taken his yeah. argument to make the announcement. Oh. is the calculator himself, Hunter? Okay. Who did we well, decide after to much, much deliberation, I have the name here written on my nice whiteboard. We're also at the twenty-one family total right now at the tally. In fact, you slowed down. We only had one that round. So that's kind of crazy. <laughs> We need Luke. We need Luke. Family. Back. Unfortunately, we were going to have to eliminate Stefano. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Stefano, any last words? Uh, it was fun, guys, and uh, I'd love to take part again. So I'll look to the next time. So we are down to three individuals now, the three biggest Fast and Furious fans in the league. <laughs> I know Luke's kicking himself right now. I'm Let's get to fan. the third question. What is the best action scene from the Fast and Furious movies? I'm going to go with the runway chase from Fast and Furious 6. I'm going to go with F5, the bank, when they're carrying the bank behind the cars. Look, I'm going to go with the submarines then. Yeah. All right. So first of all, I just want to say, I know that everyone complains about the legitimacy of how long the runway actually is. But that's one of the most memorable climaxes in all of the Fast and Furious franchise for me. There's so many, there's stakes, there's a lot of lives that do end up getting lost and other ones that you sometimes even believe might get lost. And there's just a lot going on in one scene. You have the cars outside all being, trying to slow down the plane while Vin Diesel's inside fighting that other big guy. There's just so many different things about the Fast and Furious in one scene that I just felt was captured really well. That's the thing with me with action scenes. I think when you have too many things going on at the same time, you kind of lose that like sense of thrill and danger. In F5, when they do that car chase that they like carrying that safe behind, it's just like, first of all, it, it's one of the scenes that looks more, um, that could really happen. And then the, the way that they have the skill the way they use the bank to like uh, throw down cars, buildings, everything. Okay, so uh, I'm, I went to the submarine as my backup because I think it's the craziest scene to date until Fast 9 obviously came up with the space and everything because you're chasing and you're on ice, you know, in Siberia with a nuclear submarine with torpedoes going on around with people driving cars on ice and the uh, people blocking off it uh, they, when they block off Vin Diesel against that fire. I mean, nothing really makes sense. They would all be dead in five seconds if it would have happened in real life. But because it's Fast Furious, it exists and it can happen. Just because it's something ridiculous doesn't always translate to good. Fate I agree. of the Furious is probably one of my favorite movies out of the past, like few that have come out, three or four. I can't even count any of them anymore. And honestly, Fate of the Furious, even though that was one of my favorite ones, I feel like I don't really remember much that happened in that submarine scene. I remember The Rock kicking the torpedo, and they were kind of kicking it back and forth, but it wasn't the most memorable scene for me personally. Thing is, Dave, like for me, I mean, I don't remember the movie at all, you know, and I don't remember most of these movies, you know, in mind, but the action scenes that stood out to me, submarine is one of them that stood out for me for me the issue with the the runway scene is that it's also choreographed you have the rock fighting like the big guy you have vin diesel fighting the other guy you have like the girl fighting the girl and it's like it kind of feels that scene in uh in end game when all the girls are gonna fight and like all the boys get away so it's all very it doesn't feel organic it's like so many things happening at the same time everyone has to have something to do 
and then like you have an important moment in the, in the middle when Giselle dies and it just like gets completely overthrown because then you have all this fight again with the stupid ending and, and like I have to say it you you called it up but like that runway like it never ends it just feels completely out of touch it's just completely okay don't don't start silly, bringing but... the logic into this franchise after. <laughs> no but, but, yeah, the is, but, but the thing is the thing is what i don't care when you go over the top so much that you can tell it's going over the top kicking a torpedo is so over the top it's okay <laughs> but when you start getting everything like and these guys that can't lose you have the rock fighting this guy and he has to win and then it, there's no stakes there you know exactly what's going to happen yeah. And on all these other scenes, you don't you know what's going to happen. You that as if happen. in Fast 9, you don't know that they're going to get away with the bank ball. No, but the no, thing is, the thing like is, no, F5, you mean? The thing no, is, you even have the twist. You even have the twist on F5. You, you know that, they're getting away. You don't know. Scene, though? That's, no, that's but the, the thing you, you said, you know, scene. no, you said, you know, they're going to get away with the bank ball. They didn't. In the movie, yeah. they didn't. So you're not expecting. You just made my point. You're not expecting you get you expecting that they get away somehow and they get caught and you don't know what happened and then there's the twist and it's not part of the action scene but the action scene is completely something you don't know it's how chaotic. it's going to end. Yeah, and, anything and that can happen. Works so better, uh, like so I know, but you even over. just admitted it, it's not part of the action scene. We're talking about just no, no, no. Their I, no, don't turn my words. You said you, you know just what's turned my happen. words. No, no, you <laughs> said no. You said you said we know what's gonna happen. That they're gonna get away with the vault, and I'm saying in the action scene, the action scene ends with them not getting away with the vault. So yeah, you don't know what's do gonna happen. The twist the vault comes in after. The end. No, the twist comes after, and like you said, it doesn't matter. But there, because we're talking about the action scene, not the whole movie. Like we're talking away, about the, and the end of the movie. Scene. They do get away, but then but we're well, discussing the action the scene. You know, have, you, have, have, you just said. Even, Dev, you just said that doesn't have anything to do with the action scene. In the action scene, you don't know what's going to happen in the end. And what happens, you don't expect. What comes after doesn't matter. But it's the scene that's more real. It's the scene that's like m better choreography. It's the scene that could be in a movie like Mad Max because it feels not like yes. CGI and stuff, like all these other scenes. So yeah. that movie and that action scene is one of the most memorable. That's the scene that... But Everyone talks about not being a better movie in the franchise. No, but look, uh, as as Aniola said, that it's it's you, the runway scene is very choreographed, and both of the scenes we picked are all chaos. It's left and right, and that's what these movies are about nowadays. It's about the most chaotic thing. I mean, they went to space. That thing was just happening left and right, and that magnet scene. I mean, another amazing action sequence is when they hack all the cars, because that's just like wow, you know, like the wow factor is there. Because, I mean, for me, it's a submarine, a nuclear submarine, kicking torpedoes and stuff. But, I mean, a runway, okay, like a runway is a, is a plane. Yes, it's spectacular and there's okay. fighting going on. But it's something that could be envisioned, you know, in a normal movie. I'm just going to reiterate again. I find the submarine scene kind of forgettable. And the fact that Yolo is barely even mentioning it kind of helps support it, I'm guessing. Because Yolo is not even attacking the submarine at this point. Look, what, uh, I'm not attacking the submarine because we are on a fight. So I'm going to attack the one I think it's weaker. The submarine for me is one of those ridiculous scenes that in any other movie, you would walk out of it and say, what the hell? I'm not going to say what the hell F was that. But in the Fast and the Furious, you see like the rock kicking a torpedo and you go, well, that, that's not the stupidest thing I saw in this movie. And that's the thing. Like on your scene, if you said what's the most emotional scene, I would probably say the runway because of that Gis of Giselle. Okay. But the thing is, you just said it got tossed to the side. You said Giselle. But that's what was going There's, it's, it's, there's a genuine death there. There's but a genuine that, death, you know, that we could care about. That wasn't before. even approach right. So you guys just both talk. admitted that there were stakes and an emotional investment. No, in no stakes because it was like they run over a cat. She fall out of yeah. the car and they all continue. You were just saying. And, the, like, and they all went. No, let me finish. And they continue fighting till they take off. They didn't. Okay. They didn't. Uh, they okay, didn't we're done. Right. They didn't deal with it. Right. Okay. Wow. That was that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> GG. I can't, can't believe that I'm I'm getting like. Yes, so you're defending a fast furious <laughs> movie with your heart. Miss <laughs> uh, having me on your gonna... team, Agnolo. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens when you leave my family. 
I'm going after you. <laughs> uh, like John Cena, I didn't leave. You abandoned me. So we've come to a common consensus. It was between two of you for most of it. The person we thought that was definitely safe was Nikita. We thought that Nikita had the most stable argument. Of course, now it comes down to Agnolo and Dev, former family <laughs> members, now on different families. Jack, you make the call. Alrighty. So after discussion, we have decided that the one who will be eliminated is... Agnolo. <laughs> Any last words now? No. Yeah, not gonna say anything. Bye. So, Agnolo has been eliminated, which means we are down to a final two. The defending champion, Nikita, looking to win his second straight Cinemores in a row against Dev, looking to win his first Cinemores ever in the League of Cinephiles. As we go to what is the best Fast and Furious film? Uh, F5. Dev? I'm going with the, the first, the OG. So why I think F5 is not my favorite Fast and Furious movie, uh, but it is, I think it's the best one. It's my second favorite, and I think it is the best one. It does the best for the franchise. It really establishes that world building. It has all the old crew back from the previous movies, uh, and it's not yet as Bollywood as, let's say, all the subsequent films. It still has kind of a touch, touch with reality, you know? We get Rock in it, who is an awesome addition, much like Vin Diesel, an alpha male, a strong guy who can punch things left and right. We get a fight of Rock versus Vin Diesel. We get the whole favela chase where the people are jumping on the roofs. Uh, we get the we get the vault chase, which was previously discussed as uh, one of the best action sequences, and that was my pick. All right, let's go to Dev. I think the fast, the first, the Fast and the Furious. It's what the whole franchise was built on. It has some of the best writing, which I feel like Fast Five, great movie, but it really changed what the franchise was about. Whereas the original kind of established those themes that have now become a meme of family, tally for Hunter. And I just felt it's the more grounded and more emotional, has most emotional weight to it. Uh, while I do agree that F1 is the OG, you know, it sets up the whole racing and everything, but the creators of, let's say, the universe now, have scrapped that vision, and I, I think at, at F4, you know, and they all went with the crazy things. And I think F5 was that last, you know, stepping stone that took Fast Furious to the to the to the way it is now. Yes, I'm not a fan of these crazy things going on, but this is what the universe is all about now. And I think F5 is the best one because it contributed the heaviest to the world building of the current state of the Fast Furious. It's what brings all the big names in, like Jason Statham and whatnot. You even said in your opening argument that Fast Five is not even your favorite movie in the franchise. True. Um, Fast Five, like I said, I love it, but what it did was it took what worked best out of the previous four movies and put them together and made a really fun movie that is what the franchise is now built towards. Whereas the first one really built a lot of depth. It's a really, like, grounded story about an undercover cop infiltrating a heist there's a lot of stakes multiple characters die i think it's the only film in the franchise where multiple important characters die part one might as i said must be the most grounded it it was the one that set up the whole the whole racing and the underground stuff and the criminal things but even with f2 they already started diversifying away from it i just want to go back to vin diesel's character like again i've brought up writing oh. like three times but like the way they established his backstory where he beat somebody near death, went to prison, and now he's come back. It really set up his character and not only the themes of family, but why he chooses family, why he's the most level-headed. It's because he's made these mistakes and he knows he doesn't want to make those mistakes again in his life. And he that's what made him the leader. That's really established all in the first movie. And I remember just that end chase scene, the quarter mile. When Vin Diesel's car flipped, I remember the first time I saw it and my jaw, I was holding my breath. Nowadays, Vin Diesel could jump off of a 200-story building, and I'm going to just, like, roll my eye. The emotion of uh, Brian just watching Dominic Toretto drive away with his car at the end. It's, it's, it's really what built that whole family theme, and which is kind of just reiterated throughout every single sequel. All the subsequent movies, they kind of scrapped the original idea. Yes, it is like a good Fast movie. Five. It, it is it is a good movie exactly but it's not the best one because we're, we're talking about the best for the franchise overall you know we're just when we talk about best mcu movie 
for MCU overall, best, uh, let's say, Harry Potter or Star Wars movie for the franchise overall. Yes, we all might love the original Star Wars, but we think Empire Strikes Back is the best one because it may, it did the most for the franchise. And I think F5 is what did the most for the franchise, whether you list all the characters being there, the action. Okay, that's going to end the- it. Okay, so now we're going to make a decision. One eternity later. So we have come up with someone. It was very close. We were kind of split. We had to go down to like the nitty gritty um, of it all, but we've officially come up with the person we think should win the match. And your winner! And still! So Very close. Jam was so close. Um, it, with the rebuttals and arguments we thought were split, but when it came down to answer and the supporting reasons for the answer, we thought that you um, you beat him by a hair. You won your second Cinemores in a row. Um, in two weeks. champion in two weeks. Yeah, I mean. Honestly, first thing, Dave, a great pleasure arguing with you. I would have, I wouldn't have been upset if I would have lost because you had amazing arguments and you're a true fan of the franchise. I mean, big props. But the main thing, got got the points for the family, okay? The family, family, family. Hunter Tally, all those, you know, for all the members we have. Uh, super happy to bring points back to back to our ranking. And yeah, you know, excited for next Cinema Wars. Hopefully it's not in a week, you know? Just let me enjoy a bit, you know, my back to back championship, you know? Then we'll go for a three peat. This is truly mm. sensational what you're doing now. I mean, two in a row in two weeks, that's pretty, pretty difficult. I'm not sure if anybody's ever done that before. Um, and again, going back to the factions, you get four points for the match. You also get an extra point because you, you successfully defended your championship. So oh, nice. a total of five points. Again, this is huge. Um, anything you want to say for the fa- to the family, Gil, Ben, Adam, and Rod? I mean, the family, um, I hope I made you proud, you know, and I hope we keep going, keep up the space and just rack up the points and win this whole thing, you know, because yeah, gun with a win, gotta, gotta win. All right, now let's bring in Dev. Now, Dev. You got the word from Nikita. It was so close, man. Any words? I you made it to finals. Yeah. You were close, but uh, no, anything Nikita you did say? did really good. Honestly, as soon as Anyolo got out, no disrespect to him at all, but like that was kind of the moment where I felt accomplished. So this was more just like a first or second. I think I've learned my place. I either come in second in these, or I'm a first round exit. So hopefully, I can get more second places and win one of them one of these days. They have this in a lot of like real sports. This is kind of a a mental game but they have like um in football it's like the best quarterback without a super bowl or in movies it's like the best actor without an oscar yeah i think we'd all feel comfortable we'd all feel comfortable saying you're probably the by far the best player to never win a cinema wars so i mean i'll take i'll take that it's it's something the word best is in there at some point. So, guys, anything you wanted to close out by saying before we end this match? Uh, Hunter, what's the what's the final tally? Do you have it? Oh yeah, I do. We were actually slacking a little bit there, but uh, Nikita really pumped those numbers up at the end. Whoops, we ended with thirty nine times. We said. Ah uh, yes, Ooh. yes. Thir- oh, sorry, good, guys. Hopefully, we end up with thirty nine Fast and Furious movies. So, Wonderful. and what are your thoughts on Nikita now winning two Cinemores in a row? I mean, that's a total of nine points for his faction in two weeks. Yeah, the breadwinner. So before this match, it might have been Kurt for MVP in terms of, like, for the season. Um, I think I'd feel comfortable saying that Nikita's the MVP of season two so far. He's we making the case for it. Yeah. Well, he's definitely been the one who's leading his faction right now to potential victory. So, I mean, the one that gets you to the top is really the person who deserves the MVP. And with this win and then last week's win as well, he's really been on a streak, which is kind of symbolized this whole season two experience of just winning and coming out from behind and doing stuff people haven't expected him to do. I mean, we always know he'd be good, yeah. but we didn't think he'd be the number one contender this whole time. Last two rounds, he was like the strong, he was the strongest one of the last two rounds. Yeah. So this guy, like, he just gets better and better as the game keeps going. The guy is a machine when it comes to Cinema Wars. As we end the show, Nikita defends his crown earning four points for his faction, plus the one point he gets for successfully defending his crown. This is a just ginormous win for Gone with the Win. Follow all the individuals in this match on their respective accounts. The links for those will be down in the description below. Thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you for watching to La Familia. See you all later. Ciao.